JP Hornick, I'm the president of the Ontario Public Service Employees Union and I represent Toronto on our executive board. I've also been uh, a resident of Toronto for over 25 years. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm here to support and make some recommendations uh, on the budget for you all. Uh, Toronto, as we know, is facing some of the most difficult times in the city's history. We have a cost of living crisis, we have rising rates of homelessness, profound lack of shelter space, uh, you know, the despairing unaffordability of food, rent, transit, childcare, and a host of other basic necessities. We also have crum crumbling infrastructure and, uh, you know, a dearth of uh, programs and services in order to meet community needs. One in 10 Torontonians rely on food banks, which is twice as many as last year. Uh, the Daily Bread Food Bank saw an unprecedented 154% increase in food bank visits, and over half of those which visited uh, are employed. On any given night, there are 10,000 people without housing in Toronto. Uh, we know this will result in the death or severe bodily injury of some of our city's most vulnerable residents, to say nothing of the mental health toll. We also know that these crises can't be addressed overnight, and there have indeed been some significant gains in the 2024 budget, including a move away from austerity budgets, and for that I applaud this council. Uh, now is our time to fight for a better city. The coming increase in property taxes that more closely matches the needs of Toronto's residents is another such gain. It should be applauded. Taxes are how we pay for the services that our communities need, and Toronto has one of the lowest property tax rates in Ontario. Even under the current and proposed increase, that won't change. For an average of about a dollar a day, property owners will be helping our city to provide stable TTC fares, extended library hours, enhancements to fire and paramedic services, continued access to low-cost recreational programs, access to free community spaces and programs, and more. We will also see greater supports for tenants and the growing number of unhoused community members, as well as greater supports for much-needed mental health crisis programs. As a, as a person who pays property taxes, I am very much in favor of my taxes going up, going up in order to support the most vulnerable among us. However, I'm here today not to talk about that, uh, but to talk about what needs to be done uh, to better support those who are struggling across our city. This includes people who are working full time and still unable to make ends meet, some of whom are providing the very services our city relies on. No one should be forced to live in poverty, and that includes folks who work directly or indirectly providing crucial municipal services. One concrete way to make this a reality is to expand the city's fair wage policy to include all workers directly or indirectly employed by the City of Toronto. Let me give you an example from Opsu Sefpo. We represent 691 workers at Homes First, an organization contracted by the city to provide shelter services and who provide supports for over 2,000 people in 26 locations. Since the pandemic, Homes First has grown significantly, but that growth has been sustained through the use of temporary agency staff. Despite the availability of nearly 700 workers, Homes First chooses to bring in hundreds of temporary agency staff from at least 18 different agencies. They are working without benefits, without vacation time, and without the safety of a bargaining unit. This is creating profound precarity for many dedicated workers who support some of Toronto's most vulnerable residents, which is a terrible irony. Many of the workers at Homes First are racialized, and the majority of them are women, and they have been working without a contract since February of 2022. They've been struggling to make ends meet without a wage increase since the signing of their last collective agreement in 2018. These workers, like many others across our city, are pink collar workers, folks who are employed in care oriented professions and that are largely non union and nonprofit and historically considered to be so called women's work and accordingly paid much lower wages. As it is, the fair wage policy in the city applies predominantly to male-dominated, blue-collar work in the non-unionized construction industry. There is a stark gender disparity at play that needs to be addressed. The fair wage policy need, office needs to be staffed properly, armed with the authority to enforce wage standards, and equipped with the means to ensure that these standards are not just nominal expectations, but tangible, real-world benchmarks. It's not enough to have a fair wage policy on paper. We need teeth in its enforcement. It's time for the city to set a standard that is not just an ideal, but a practical reality for every worker contributing to the better of, betterment of uh, Toronto. 
What the workers of Homes First are experiencing is not isolated, but a symptom of a broader, broader problem. By bolstering the Fair Wage Policy Office, Toronto can take a significant step toward building a foundation where everyone in our community can thrive. Thank you for your time. Uh, I can <laughs> hand it off to you if you'd like. Just to say there are questions. <laughs> Councillor Royce, go first. Surprised by some of the comments you've made, because um, my understanding was that Toronto does have a fair wage policy, and you said it, it does, but I thought it applied to everybody. Are you no. saying it does not? Oh, I, I, it's uh, primarily construction. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, is that it? Has it always been this way, or is it, um, I'm asking you, I should be asking staff, but they're not here. <laughs> has, it, has it always been this way? Yeah, to my knowledge. Oh, okay, well, yeah. we must change that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. It's good to see you again, Chris. Uh, yeah, I have, I have to ask the questions about this, because you represent the, the employees in Homes First, and, and it makes sense that they're, they're having to grow as fast as they are, including during those pandemic times, we've even, we've even added a couple of permanent shelters. One in uh, one that uh, opened in in my ward is is uh, operated by Homes First. So are they are are they uh, uh, as management are they um, couching this as uh, through rapid expansion we're going to have temporary for now and you will eventually be FTEs or is just a, a new business practice unfolding? This is 100% uh, not particularly new business practice unfolding and one that actually violates these workers collective agreement. The abuse of yeah. temporary staff in this manner is unjustifiable. Uh, there are the workers available to do the work. Management prefers to outsource the work and then hire supervisors to surveil the staff who do things like attend union meetings or in one case uh, a woman who was seven months pregnant working an overnight shift uh, fell asleep at 3 a.m. and a supervisor came in and said, you're done, uh, and sent her home on and said, you'll have to find a TTC. So we are not looking at resources being directed to supporting the vulnerable residents, our neighbors who are in the shelters, let alone the workers, but rather, um, I would argue, to uh, target those workers who are actually trying to exercise their rights and uh, demand better working conditions. And uh, at this, you know, this this is a the bolstering of the policy is a it's a big concept uh, coming at a time when we have a less than hell. We had someone come and make a deputation this morning about how we could save eleven billion dollars uh, uh, not doing uh, if we d entered into an open contracting uh, situation. This is separate from that issue. Mm -hmm. Um, has has there been any conversation with uh, with city management about this concept, or would we be introducing it new as uh, as the political wing? Uh, we have had conversations with the political wing. I'm not sure about engaging directly with city management. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that I do know good. that uh, what I'm hoping is that to build the appetite to actually pursue the expansion of the fair wage policy. I think that this is a city that, frankly, wants to be. Uh, ensure that we're not just a good employer ourselves, but that whoever we contract our services with is also a good employer. And my understanding is that uh, the Homes First contracts might be coming up for renewal soon and might be worth a second look in terms of who is providing the city services. Okay. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I think that's it for questions. Thank, Thank you. you so much, JP.